Hello, so this evening we're taking a look at the registration and sign up process for airline.virtualflight.online. So without further ado, even though we've got this lovely Carinado 182 RGE sitting on the ground here in front of us at Boonville in the US, we're going to go and jump over to the web and look at the Virtual Flight Online website or the, the airline at virtualflight.online. So the URL is airline.virtualflight.online. We are not signed in, so we're going to go and register with the airline as a brand new user to show you how that works. So we click on register at the top right, and we type our name in, Jonathan Beckett in my case, and I'm going to put in a secondary email address that I often use, so my outlook.com address. I'm going to say my airline I'm going to join, and we've got several airlines for different kinds of flights, but it doesn't really matter which one you say you're affiliated with at all. So if we say we're going to be in the flying club, we're going to then put in our home airport. Now, people have had issues with this. When you click on a field that brings up a search, the search box is below the field. Okay, so although there's a great big long list here, that will just scroll forever and ever. So click in the box, and if I wanted to put in my local airfield, which happens to be Wickham Air Park, I can start typing part of its name and it will come up in the search result. And then I can click on it. But I could also type in the ICAO code, so EGTB, for example, and it will come up. So any part of the name will bring it up. So now I want to say the country that I'm in. So if I say United for short for United Kingdom, and there's a, us in the list. So you can see United States of America is there as well. And then we can say time zone, so we could pick a time zone, we don't need to. So transfer hours, this is important, and lots of people have missed this. If you have filed hours in another airline, you can pass them into this airline and immediately jump up the rank ladder so more aeroplanes become available to you. So I've got several hundred hours, I'm not going to check it, but I'm going to guess 200 hours elsewhere, which will take me straight to an A-class captain on, on this airline. So, and then I'm going to put a password in, so we'll go and put our password in, and then we say, by registering, we agree to the terms and conditions, so we'll click register. And the website says, verify your email address. Before proceeding, please check your email for a verification link. If you did not receive the email, click here to request another. Okay, so we go and look in our email and we can see we've got an email address waiting, or sorry, an email waiting for us. And it says, hello, please click the button below to verify your email address. And this is from airline.virtualflight.online. So we'll click verify email address and it pops back up in the browser and we're logged in already. If we weren't logged in, when we do log in, obviously it won't prompt us to verify again. Now, when this sends the email, and you can see it arrived in Outlook, and I've got a forwarder on which sent it over to Gmail, but um, it could go into your spam. We've had lots of people where this has ended up in their spam because it does look like an automated message. And, you know, the, the email clients are very good at detecting them and putting them in the spam box for you. So lots of people have had this end up in their spam, so just be mindful of that. Before you start shouting and saying, I haven't received my email, have a really good look for it. Okay. So once you're signed in, the next thing you need to do is get the ACARS client working. So that's what all these people are using to track where their aeroplane is. So if you go to the Docs and Resources section in the website, there is a Downloads link. And inside the Downloads link, there's a link to ACARS client. So if you click on that, it will download it in your browser. Mine's just downloaded the copy of it. I already had it downloaded. You saw it come up there with a one on it. So once you've downloaded it, you can just unzip it and run it. I'm not going to go through all the machinations of doing that, because that's just Windows and using your computer. But I've already got a shortcut to my, my copy of ACARS on my desktop. So when I run it for the first time, it comes up and it's empty. It doesn't know who I am or what it's here for. It's got this thing about profiles at the top. If you've never filled it in before, you are doing a new profile, so there's no need to click New. Okay, so we want the URL of the air, the airline. So it's https colon slash slash airline dot virtual flight dot online. It's the same as the website. Now it wants an API key. 
So what that means, it says look in your profile. So we'll come back to the website, we click on our name, we click on profile, and you can see next to our name at the top left, there's an API key and there's an I. If you click on the I, it shows you it. So we'll double click on it with the mouse and right click and copy. Then we'll come back over to ACARS and we'll click in the API box, right click and paste. Okay, so it's put that sequence of characters into the box for us. Now we can say what mode we want this in. We might not want it in dark mode, we might want it in light mode. So we've done that. We say what simulator we use, we're using Microsoft Flight Simulator. And then we can click save. The moment we do that, no, no, not only has it changed the mode it's running in, if we go and click on the home icon, it knows who we are. It knows we've got 200 hours filed, and it knows our rank because of that. And it also knows, you know, our, our home address. There's one more thing we have to do. In order for ACARS, so in order for this program to track us, it needs to know about the world, and it can't get that information from Flight Simulator, what, you know, just while it's running. It has to have a look at it first. So we need to come into the cog menu, or this page, and go to the scenery section and click on Resync Scenery. And it will take it a moment or two for that to happen. So what it's now doing is reading through the scenery database of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And it's making a list of all the runways, all the taxiways, all of the gates, all of the airports, and where they are in the world, you know, exactly where they are. Because then it can impose rules on if you're using your lights correctly on the taxiway, or if you're using your lights correctly as you accelerate down the runway, or if you are over speeding on a taxiway, or if you are moving away from the gate, or all those kinds of things. It's watching you the whole time, but it can only do that by knowing a really detailed plan of the world. So that's what it was just doing there. Look, it's finished syncing now, and it gives you a date of the last sync. Now this is important, if you go and add more scenery to your simulator, like a custom airport, you really do need to come back in and resync. otherwise it won't know exactly where you are in terms of taxiways and runways and things like that. Okay, so now that's done, we're ready to go flying basically. So today we can either, and again this is all covered in the airline documentation, so if we come back to the airline and just click on the heading here, if you click on the airline guide, it takes you all the way through the different ways you can file flight plans. So I'm just going to do it directly in ACAST to prove that it's working. Okay, so if I go and click on the flights page, which is the second icon down, I can fill my flight details in directly. I don't have to do it through the website. So if I'm just going for a fly, I can do that. So we're in the flying club, we'll invent a flight number. We don't have to do a leg or a code, they are only for tours. We'll say this is a, a technical test flight. We can put in the departure code of the airport we're leaving. So this is going to be D83 for Boonville. And we can see where we're going to, and let's have a look at the map. If we flew from Boonville over to Ukiah, that's K-U-K-I. So let's type in K-U-K-I. And then as soon as we tab away from there, it should know about where we are in the world. That's interesting that it doesn't. Fascinating. Let's try this. So, oh, we have to put an airport, an aeroplane in as well. So we'll put in the C182. Oh, 182. I'll get it right eventually. And we'll choose one of the Cessna 182s. And we'll say start the flight. And there we go. It knows exactly where we are and where we're going to. It's even brought up a map. And now it's look, look at the details it's already recorded. Loaded 21 rules. D83 to Kuki, and we're starting at gate parking 2, ramp GA small, started boarding. So everything we do now in the simulator will be tracked by ACARS. So let's go and do a, a little circuit here, or we'll go and fly over to Kuki actually I suppose, just to show you that happening. Okay, so we need to start behaving ourselves in the aeroplane now, don't we, because we're being watched by ACARS the whole time. So battery on, beacon light on, uh, we could put the nav light on now, it's not going to hurt too much in this aeroplane, we'll check the fuel is from the correct tank, it is, so then we will put the mixture to rich and 
I think we'll pro open the prop, put the propeller forward, sorry, open the throttle slightly, put the propeller forwards, turn the um, magnetos to start. And we have an engine running. Let's have a look at the RPM, a little bit more RPM just to get it to tick over at a thousand. So you can see that happening there. Okay, so then we can, we don't need pitot heat just yet. We'll go and calibrate our altimeter. We'll turn on the radio master switch to get the GPS up and running. Even though we're not going to use any of it, we're just going to fly a very quick circuit. Or well, not a circuit, sorry, we're just going to fly over to UK. I suppose we could program it, couldn't we? Just for a bit of fun. Uh, we'll put the um, transponder onto standby for the moment. Just waiting for the GPS to come up, it shouldn't be too long. Actually, for a bit of fun, should we go and switch over to using the new GTS, or the TDS GTN 750? That's interesting that the tablet won't put itself away. Oh, okay, maybe it will. Okay, so consumer license, yes, it's me. Continue, continue. So, a flight plan. We're going to go from Boonville to. Uh, KUKI, Toss, isn't it? System test, okay. So that's QK, enter, done, back, map. And you can see that on the map now. Very good. Okay, so let's go and get the head tracking operational. Have a look around us. Our taxi light on. We could put the yoke back on for the moment, couldn't we? Did we actually go and put the... We haven't put the alternator on yet. We won't be generating electricity. We'll be busy flattening the battery. So yeah, I think we're looking good. So we're just going to go out to the runway here at Boonville and see how we get on. So just before we get going, we'll go and have a look and see what ACARS has been recording. So we'll roll to a stop here, put the parking brake back on for the moment, and we'll go and put the landing lights on, ready for takeoff. We'll put the pitot heat on briefly. Oh, and we'll go and do the transponder as well. Put it over to alt mode. So. What's ACAR said so far? Started pushback, parking brake turned off, engine started, transponder changed, taxi lights turned on, started taxiing out on or crossing runway 31, parking brake turned on, landing lights turned on. It's very good, isn't it? So then we'll minimise this then and we'll just get on with our flight and we'll have suspense until we land and find out how badly we've done. Okay, so parking brake off. We shouldn't need any flaps for this takeoff. So keep an eye on the RPM and the manifold pressure. Keep the aircraft straight, it's a bit windy. You can see there's quite a lot of wind coming down the runway towards us, look. So we can rotate and gear up. And we'll zoom in a bit on this map. looking for about 80 knots usually on the climb out with the 182. So you use your pitch obviously, maintaining the same power level. And we'll just straight line it over to Ukiah. And then get into the pattern and land. And we'll see how much we get complained at by ACARS. 
So it should be good fun. So yeah, although I showed the basic principles of using it in a previous video, I didn't walk through the entire registration process. So you didn't really get to see what it's all about, you know, how you set it up, how you put in your API key, where you get that from, or how you sync the scenery data. So we'll get this going on autopilot in a moment. So we're going to come back off the power a little bit. To be honest though, the, the Carinado aircraft are quite simplified. You haven't got any any way of damaging the engines in them really. So although you know we can follow best practices, they don't really have any effect in the Carinado aircraft, so we, we do our best. So normal GA aircraft rules would say, you know, once you get above a thousand or fifteen hundred feet you would go and turn your landing lights off. I'm not going to this is following commercial rules where it's going to say below 10,000 feet we should have the landing lights on. Okay, so let's go and engage the autopilot. And we will spin the course around to go roughly the direction we're going anyway so it gives us some visual indication. Actually, we want to be going about that direction anyway. So we'll go and line our heading bug up as well. And we'll go to heading mode on the autopilot. So the airplane will gently twist left. And when we get to 4,000 feet, we will click the altitude hold button. So we're just watching it climbing. It's climbing is doing really well, actually. It's climbing about 1,200 feet a minute. Okay, so then we can pull the throttle back and pull the propeller back. We're above 3,000 feet now, so we'll also lean the mixture out. And the car is just down in this valley in front of us. It won't take long to get there at all. It's really smart how the TDS illustrates your um, glide distance, should you have an engine out. It's very cool. So we're looking good on the speed, about 125 knots. It'll probably creep up to about 130, depending on the wind. Obviously this is going to be saying go a certain heading to get to the... Oh no, it's just telling us about our license. That's fine. So if we go and have a look at ACARS while we're flying, you can see it's tracking our flight very, very accurately. We can zoom in and out and move the map around. So it's, it's, there's a rule violation, strobes must be on while in flight. Now, this aircraft doesn't have strobes. So that's something we're working on at the moment to make some profiles for different aeroplanes that tell it to ignore certain rules for certain aeroplanes. Because of that, at the moment, we have zeroed out the penalties for lights on the various aeroplanes. Okay, so let's come off the autopilot, pull the throttle back to 50%, and we'll start descending into Ukiah. going quite fast, so we'll just lift the nose. We're not in a huge hurry to descend. So 
going to be one of the shortest flights ever. It's a lovely clear day. It's not a cloud in the sky. Okay, let's go and turn. One of the nice things about the TDS GTN 750 is it um, extends dotted lines on the axis of the runway so you can easily judge approaches. OK, so we're well within range to be putting the undercarriage down, which will give us some extra drag. have a little peek. <laughs> There's the airfield over there. So we're within flaps range now, so we'll start extending flaps as well. fine now. Got lots of room to lose the speed and the 500. altitude. Pull up. Sink rate. up as we roll in. Looking for the exit. Landing lights can come off. Just taxi up and park the aeroplane. Okay, parking brake is on, so we can just pull the mixture. Pull 
the propeller control back and go and turn things off around the cockpit so the lights can come back off, the pitot heat can come back off, the avionics can come off and the power can come off and then we can go back to ACARS and we can go to the flight page and we can end flight. Now here's something everybody misses. We can put some notes in and say test flight for example. You don't have to <laughs> if I could type. We don't have to type anything. And then we have to click File Flight, otherwise it doesn't get filed. So you click File Flight and you hang on for a moment. There it goes, Filing Pyrep. Give it a few moments. Looks like the website's really busy at the moment for some reason. And it's done it. OK, so if we go over now and have a look at the website, and we're going to refresh the front page. Yeah, the website's just really busy. And we scroll down. Oh, there's only 21 active flights. So we are no longer on the map. Okay, but if we go and look under our own name and look at reports, we can see there's the flight we just did. We landed at 179 feet a minute. We got a score of 100 points, which is good. If we go and click on that flight, we can see the, the exact route we took that was recorded. It doesn't record every second. It really just looks for events along the way. And we can see the PyREP fields for that route. And so all the data about how we, um, you know, how we behaved on the flight. We can see the, the detailed flight log of what was going on. Now look, we've got an issue here with engine stopped and started. That's a flight simulator bug. That doesn't actually affect your control. That's because I brought the engine to idle so it thinks I'm stopping the engine. So during that steep descent, that's what caused that. So it's good though, isn't it? And you get a full breakdown now. Look, that's actually cost me 228 euros to do that flight because we had the pilot payment, which because I'm a professional pilot, I'm a class A captain. That's cost them money to have me fly the airplane. You've got the airport authority fee. You've got the crew only catering. You've got airport authority fee, we've got, that's the departure and the arrival airport. So it cost 30 euros to use the departure airport, it cost another 24 euros to land. We got a block time cost for the, the airplane to use it, so we had to hire the airplane at 20 dollars or 20 euros. Fuel cost cost us 10. Ground handling at the arrival cost us five. Ground handling at the departure cost us five. It's really interesting, isn't it? A lot of these numbers we're still tweaking to make them fair. But you can see it's um, it's really interesting. And you can see we did 154% of the the point-to-point -point route. Obviously because we did a bit of a circuit. So it added to the route. So there you go. That's the basics of how you can do a free flight. Now, obviously, if we wanted to do another flight... So we're at Kuki now. Say we wanted to go and do a really big flight up to, um, I don't know, KACV. Yeah. So what we could do is go in here and say, do a free flight in here using the airline. And we could say, go from Kuki to KACV. Well, let's type it correctly. KACV. And we'll say this is a passenger charter flight. And we're going to do it in the 182. And we'll pick one of them. That one will do. And we'll proceed. So this is the pre-file for SimBrief. So let's go and generate SimBrief. Now, does SimBrief know about the Cessna 182? I'm not sure that it will. No, it doesn't. So we can't do that. That's a shame. So we'd have to do it in a completely different aeroplane which we could do if we went into free flight and we pretended we were in a different aeroplane. So KA, Kuki to KACV and we'll choose, say, um, a C-172. I think Simbrief does know about Cessna 172s. So let's do that again then. Generate the Simbrief OFP and it's doing it. So the trick being here, this is figuring out the full flight plan to get there, yeah? And we can even go and view that on Sky Vector. So if we pop that open, you can see that's the route, the routing it's going to use to fly across country. 
and we can open that directly into ACARS. So this has got the full operational flight plan, by the way, with all the winds aloft and all the rest of it that you'd expect to see. But we can go and click the green button at the top corner. As long as ACARS isn't running, it will now load with that flight plan. And there it is. QKEY to KACV, going via Jaeger. It's very cool, isn't it? And then you just go and fly the, the route yourself. So there you go, a little bit of a walkthrough of signing up, doing a free flight, doing a free flight via the airline, and just, you know, following the rules, basically. If you want to go and do tours, you can just go and pick a tour leg. So I'm going to go and pick, say, the Australia East Coast tour. I'm not actually going to do it, but we'll load it into ACARS just to show you it. So say we were sat on the ground at Moruya Airport here, and we're going to go over to Shell Harbour. Okay, so we can do exactly the same trick. We're looking at this in the tour. Now we could either program the departure and destination straight into ACARS, or we can generate the Simbrief OFP, or we can just load it directly into ACARS. So if we didn't want to bother with Simbrief because it's only like a little Cessna or something, we just load into ACARS, it opens ACARS, and it's got the, the flight details are straight in there, and we just need to pick our aeroplane. So we could say the 182RG again if we were going to use that. And then click start. But obviously you need to be on the ground at the departure airport. Otherwise it will complain and say, well, you can't do this because you're not there. Because remember, ACARS knows where you are. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully that's been interesting. So the main story today was how to register and how to set up ACARS on your computer. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. See you again soon. Take care.